I love working on computers, especially old computers, loud computers, dusty computers, and really just any computer that people have given up on. Because while they're not new and exciting and can sometimes be a challenge to work with, finding creative ways to put these computers to use can be a ton of fun. This here is the HP Pavilion 500-A60, which I picked up on Facebook Marketplace for $15. Although it may not seem like much, we should be able to make some upgrades such as a better power supply. Oh, okay, well maybe we can find a nice low-powered graphics card that doesn't... Hmm. Now this might seem like a very odd design, especially if you're not used to working with inexpensive pre-builds from the likes of Dell, HP, etc. But this is actually somewhat pretty common with low-powered machines designed for basic computing. Essentially, we have a laptop CPU inside a desktop chassis. To power this machine, we actually need to use an external power supply that did not come with the purchase. So unfortunately, I had to buy this one off of Amazon that actually cost more than the entire computer. Now because we're using an external 65 watt power supply, we're definitely not going to slot in a GTX 1060 and call it a budget gaming rig or anything like that, but that doesn't mean that this computer doesn't have some potential. Once we get it up and running, I think this pavilion is going to be great for basic web browsing and such, but also I think it could be really great for an affordable home server or NAS build. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at the specs. First, we have the AMD A6 5200, which is a quad-core mobile APU that came out in 2013. It's clocked at 2 GHz and only has a 25 watt TDP. This APU features the Radeon HD8400 integrated graphics. This isn't going to do much for playing games or other demanding 3D rendering, but it should give us some hardware accelerated video encoding. While this chip probably isn't amazing by today's standards, I think it might just hold up for what I have planned. This model comes with 8 gigs of DDR3 RAM, but unfortunately is limited to single channel. We also have two SATA ports. One of them is connected to the optical drive, and the other will probably connect to an SSD. And we also have Wi-Fi included. Before we take this apart and get it cleaned up, we should probably make sure that it actually boots. Nice. Now that we know it boasts, it's time to strip it down and get it cleaned up. First thing to do is disconnect all the cables from the motherboard, as well as the four screws that hold it in place. And now we can see this cute little motherboard. After that, we'll remove the only three screws holding this disgusting fan in place, because pre-builds are weird and only have three screws apparently. After that, we will very delicately take off this front panel. and then continue to remove the optical drive, as well as all of these other cables, like this weird guy, which is a SATA power cable that's powered from the motherboard. We'll also take out the Wi-Fi antenna, as well as this little front I.O. And now we can see how gross this case really is. To start getting things cleaned up, I took everything outside and used this, which is an air compressor we actually use to blow up mattresses and swimming pools and things like that. So I started dusting out the chassis, which was disgusting, and then also tried to dust out this fan, but everything was really caked on and didn't really want to be blown off, so we'll come back to that. I did the same for the motherboard while also making sure to hold the CPU fan in place to make sure it didn't get damaged. And this didn't get everything, but it got most of the big stuff. I used compressed air on the rest of the parts off camera and then came back with a small paintbrush to try to get a lot of the other dust out of the motherboard, fan, and other components. Next, we took it back inside and I wanted to get the CPU cooler off, so I disconnected the fan and then had to press in these four little tabs to disconnect these arms from these hooks to get the CPU cooler off. With the cooler removed, I came back with some isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip to remove the thermal paste off of the die. But unfortunately, the thermal paste was really, really hard, and so I had to come back with a spudger and scrape it off. I went ahead and removed the single stick of RAM from its slot to make sure it was out of the way while I was trying to scrape off the thermal paste. After a few minutes of delicate scraping, trying to avoid damaging the die, I finally had the motherboard all cleaned up and ready to go. 
After that, I took the fan off the CPU cooler and cleaned out the heatsink as well as the fan, but forgot to film it for some reason, but they both cleaned up pretty nicely. The case fan took a lot of time and elbow grease, but with a paper towel and some rubbing alcohol, I eventually got it cleaned up. After that, I went after the front panel, case, and other components with a rag, brush, and rubbing alcohol to try to clean up all the dust and gunk, and after that, we were ready to reassemble. I put a small amount of thermal paste on the CPU die, and then used a spudger to make sure it was spread out nice and evenly. After that, I put the heat seat back on, made sure to connect all the clips properly, and then reattached the CPU fan with the four screws and made sure it was plugged into the motherboard. I then put the single RAM stick back in its slot with a nice satisfying I put the optical drive back in its bay and secured it with two screws. I then tried to figure out how to get the SD card reader and front audio panel in place, but it took me a few minutes. Then I ran the Wi-Fi antenna cable and put the front panel back on. Next, I put the motherboard back in the case and used the four screws to attach it. And then I put the case fan on the back and used its three screws to attach it. After that, I connected all the cables from the front I.O. and SATA cables to the motherboard, and then I attached the SATA cables to the optical drive, as well as this 128GB A-Data SSD, which I picked up on Amazon for about 20 bucks. This case has two spaces to put a hard driver SSD. One is a 3.5 inch or 2.5 inch, and the other is a 2.5 inch, so I just put this SSD in the top slot. Now that we have it all put together, I think as a tech YouTuber, I'm supposed to do some cool B-roll or something. So here we go. So now that it's all put together, I decided to install Windows 10, which scared me because I got this message. But it turns out that was just because I had a bad USB installer. So I made a new installer and we're up and running. Once into Windows, I went ahead and installed Google Chrome and decided to test out some web browsing. For the most part, it was pretty good. There were some times it was a little bit sluggish to load in a bunch of images or different elements on a web page, but it wasn't really too noticeable. I actually ended up spending about two hours working for my real job, primarily in Google Sheets and Google Docs, and almost completely forgot that I was testing this machine. So overall, maybe a little sluggish, but pretty solid. YouTube playback was slightly disappointing. I went ahead and loaded up a video from one of my favorite YouTubers, and it was pretty bad when the video first loaded in, but this I think was partly because it was trying to load all the other elements around the video. Once the video was fully loaded in, playback was actually pretty smooth. It might not look that way, but that's partly because my capture card's limited to 30 frames per second. When watching on a separate monitor, playback was pretty smooth, and very few, if any, frames were dropped once the video loaded in. I ran a few benchmarks, starting with PC Mark 10, which got an essential score of 3291, a productivity score of 2163, and a content creation score of 826. Cinebench R15 was up next, which scored a 3 run average of 150, and this was a great chance to also see what our max power draw and temps were. So at full load, we had 27 watts measured at the wall, with a max CPU temp of 67.4 degrees Celsius. At idle load, we were pulling 14 watts from the wall with an idle CPU temp of 47 degrees Celsius. This computer didn't really get that loud under load or anything, but I did start to notice that one of the fans seemed like it had an issue. Remember that fan that was really gross and nasty? I noticed pretty quickly once I started testing that it was making an odd noise. So I replaced it with this nearly identical fan that I had laying in my garage, and now it sounds like this. Perfect. While I had no intention of testing gaming, partly because I didn't think this APU could handle it very well, and also because it's not really something I want to get into on this channel, I did think it'd be fun testing game streaming using Steam Remote Play. So I fired up Doom streaming from my gaming computer, and the experience actually wasn't half bad. The latency wasn't amazing, especially for a first person shooter like Doom, but it was definitely playable. And while the frame rate may not look that great, that's partly caused by my capture card being limited to 30 frames per second. When I played this on a different monitor, the experience was actually pretty decent. So this actually might work okay if you wanted to stream games from your gaming computer into your living room to play with family and friends or something. Overall, I'm really happy with how well this computer turned out. For only around $50, it actually performs pretty well in a few specific tasks, and it 
barely draws any power from the wall. In a later video, I plan to install Linux on this and test it out as a home server, which I think it'll do really well as, so definitely hit the subscribe button and be ready for that. I mean, if you stuck around this long, you probably enjoy these kind of videos. And if you have any good ideas for what you think I could do with this computer, definitely leave some ideas below. But until then, hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>